Welcome to the 2024 Science Olympiad Tower event. This is an instructional video for beginners in Division B to learn how to build a simple tower for this event. The first step is preparation where you collect all the wood and materials you need to build the tower and to print out the appropriate Division B template. You can organize all your materials to get ready to uh, build the tower and the first thing you'll need to do um, is to take the template, do the printout, making sure it's one-to-one, -one. take the second and third page, cut along the match line, and align those up to make sure that uh, you have the front view of the tower so that uh, you can uh, place the members in there uh, appropriately as you go forward and build. All right, so let's pre-cut all of the members uh, and lay them out on the board to make sure they're all the correct lengths. And then go ahead and uh, tape down the long section uh, member, those are the sides of the tower, and you can use tape making sure that uh, the full length of that uh, piece is aligned up to the uh, designated line from the uh, from the template. This is important uh, to keep the, uh, the the tower straight. So once um, once you finish cutting all the members and placing the uh, the, the long uh, side members in there, go ahead and uh, glue the individual members and uh, take your time doing this, making sure that it lines up as indicated on the uh, template. And when you're finished um, um, doing all of the member gluing, uh, you can put the, the support X's in the middle. And um, so you'll be gluing one side to each corner. And then uh, you'll have to overlap uh, the sides there. So be careful when you're doing the overlap. You'll have to glue the center of the X. And you'll probably have to hold down the edges of um, the other member that you put in there to complete the X uh, because one of the ends will end up coming off if the glue isn't cured yet. So you'll have to hold your finger there or put some type of clamp or tape or some other means to um, hold that member down until the glue is cured. Once it's complete, uh, then allow about 30 minutes for it to dry. Um, and um, then you can come back and you can duplicate that process because you'll have to have the, what I call the back view uh, assembled the same way so that at the end you'll end up having two identical sides, the front side and the back side of the tower built exactly to the temple dimensions. After you allow the glue to dry, you can remove all of the tape and any other pins that you have for the, uh, for the structure and the cross members. And once you've done that, you'll have to repeat the entire process uh, to create uh, another complete uh, side, uh, the, the first side being the front, and the second side that you'll be building will be for the back side, um, and you'll, uh, you'll have two identical uh, pieces at that point in time. The second step in the process is to build the front view and also to repeat that process for building the back side of the tower. Step three of this process will be the trickiest part. Um, this is where you'll take the two sides of the tower that were made previously uh, and turn them on their sides and prop them up onto the template, um, standing them straight up on edge. And you can see here in this picture, I'm using uh, soup cans and some other blocks to help position the, the sides to be completely perpendicular. Uh, and then carefully pin them in place and tape them in place to make sure that they don't move during assembly. And so you'll have to uh, glue the members on the top now, which is the third side of the tower, uh, including the cross members and all the other things you did before previously when making the front and the back sides um, to make sure that uh, all the glue uh, is in the right place and the bonds are correct and making sure you glue into the X area. And then once you've completed that and allowed that to dry for, for 30 minutes, you need to disassemble the whole arrangement and flip it on a side again so that you have access to the fourth side to also put the members on it as well and doing all the appropriate uh, gluing and uh, drying. Step four is where you do a compliance check to make sure that your completed tower meets its requirements. So to verify that you meet the height requirement, you can put the load block assembly on the top of the tower and use a long ruler to measure from the base to the bottom of the load block. And you can see that uh, if you built the template correctly, the height should be around 51 centimeters, which meets the requirements. You also verify that the load block can be held on top of the, the tower. So uh, that's a, 
the third item, but um, you can also mark on uh, a tabletop or a piece of paper a 20 by 20 centimeter square, and you can place the base of the uh, tower um, and to ensure that it meets the requirement by touching outside of that square. So also as part of this uh, compliance check, you should also verify that um, your tower is not wobbly on the bottom supports and not wobbly on the top supports. And that what you, when you put the load block on top of your tower, it's also level for loading. Step five is where you test your completed tower. The mass of a tower built with this template is going to vary based on the density of the balsa wood that you've selected, even though the uh, members are the same dimensions, the density will vary and some of these towers will end up being less than 20 grams and this particular uh, tower that we made with the wood that we had available weighed in at 28.44 grams which is a little bit heavy for the template on this tower and we went forward and we tested it using the hopper system uh, identified in the photo uh, and the tower held the full load and so the calculation uh, for this particular tower, which did not go forward and try to use the 29 centimeter diameter base for the bonus, um, is scored at the full load, 15,000 grams, divided by the mass of the uh, tower, which is 28.44, gives you a score of 527.4, uh, and that is a tier one uh, because we verified the compliance uh, back in a previous step. Now that we determined the score, let's evaluate to see if this is really a good score. So understanding that this template was designed for beginners uh, to this event, uh, now it's time to evaluate how this particular tower uh, performed and did it perform well. And I would say for first timers uh, with the mass that we had for this tower, it held a full load. Um, that's a good starting point to, to go from. Uh, and that we were in tier one because we met all the construction requirements is also good. Uh, but uh, the score achieved, uh, is that what we expected? I would hope that we'd be able to get higher scores. And because we selected dense wood um, from the balsa wood uh, family, uh, it ended up weighing quite a bit higher than what expected. And you can choose different density wood to go and uh, reduce the mass of this, and the score will increase if it holds the full load. So uh, what were the failure modes and what members broke and what bonds fell? Well, if your tower that you built had any failures, then it was particularly in the wood you selected or some imperfections or the bond joints you applied. And I would go back and take a look at those and try to improve those and, and make this tower template design hold the full load. Uh, and if you met the, the uh, full load, what kind of things can you change from this design to, to reduce the mass and uh, retest that same kind of design with different size members and maybe different density members and try to get better scores? So it's always important to document your observations and uh, what changes you're going to do in construction uh, and to document that as you go forward and build many, many uh, towers for this event. I hope you found this video to be informative and remember, keep building, keep evaluating, and keep learning. Good luck this season.